Crisis and growth. Many of you will now sit at home and think, what could I do during lockdown to get on the next level or even to say, how can I grow personally in my job, in my life? And today I have a special guest here, actor, trainer and life performance coach, Matthew Gordon-Martin. Hello, Matthew. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much for taking the time. And of course, I have to start and you know my attitude towards that. Many people call themselves life and performance coach and there are millions of actor trainers out there who let's say have debatable approaches about what they present to other people can you just give us an overview um which places did you work at so people know what your background is sure um so a trained actor and uh, went into training in acting training and coaching and i currently teach at the royal central school of speech and drama Mount View Academy, Rose Bruford College, Met Film School, to name a few. Excellent. And privately as well. Yeah, of course, of course. Excellent. So from your point of view, we have many people who now say, well, lockdown is to unwind, lockdown is to relax, and I can get back to work after the lockdown. Um, what's, what's your take on that? Um, I think that's one of the choices that people can have. It just depends on if they're great forward planners and thinkers, there are people that absolutely want to return to quote unquote normality, go mm -hmm. back to the same trend that their life was on. And there are others that can see the opportunity in this time and space being created to grow. Um, I don't think there's anyone, even CEOs who are at, I mean, the peak of their career who are not looking to grow. I don't know anyone, at least in my life, that is at the point where they're like, oh, it's time to stop because mm -hmm. I've made it all, I've done it all. Um, especially as a life coach, it's about helping people recognize their deeper desires um, and stop limiting themselves by settling. I think society on a whole is has become a little bit lazy in terms of, oh yeah, this is good enough. Um, mm -hmm. and that's a mentality for some people, which are, I guess, the people that are thinking of, you know, let's just take this time to relax and then go back to the jobs and lives that we had. If that brings them joy, good on them. <laughs> <laughs> well said, well said. Of course, some people now will claim, okay, I should invest in myself. Maybe I have the time right now during lockdown, but well, at the moment I don't have the money or I want to be careful with money and wait until after lockdown. How do you deal yeah. with that? So money is a resource, right? And we've given so much power to this money and what money represents for us. And that's one of the key things that I invite anyone to reflect on is what does money mean to them and how much power they give to it in their life. Um, money is always a great excuse. Oh, I have the time, but I don't have the money. Mm -hmm. um, I The first thing I say to a client is if you needed to find 500 pounds a thousand pounds tomorrow for an emergency could you yes great um do you could you find this money for something that you deeply desire yes the answer is barely hardly ever no um mm -hmm. and then that's when we dive into well how invested are you how committed are you to growing and developing because this is it is an investment in you and one of the things that I always say is, oh, if I if Apple was to release a new iPhone tomorrow, would you find the money to buy it? Yeah, mm -hmm. of course. I do it every year, right? Um, but you're unwilling to find that thousand pound. And of course, coaching prices vary. But wherever you are, there is always a point of entry for your budget. Mm -hmm. There is no coach out there that, you know, if everyone is starting at uh, 5,000 pounds a month, there's an entry level. So the real question is how invested, how committed are you? Do you think that you are worth it? You are valuable enough to invest in you. Mm -hmm. And I would say as much as people go, of course I am, actions speak louder than words. And I always ask people to reflect on what actions are you taking that show you that you are worth the investment? And most of them sit in silence. And that's, that's the key to breaking that money excuse. 
I have found. Very good. Your, your claim when I look on your website is be seen, be heard, be valued. Especially in the UK, quite often I hear that people say, well, I could invest in myself, but let's face it, I, I have a background which is not elitist, come from a working class background, maybe I went to an average or even below the average university or no university at all. There are so many people out there, especially when it comes to acting in the business world, when I want to start my business, everything is already offered. Why should I even try? Um, because everyone as a human being has a unique perspective. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the value lies um, in acting training. Oh my God, there are only a handful of techniques and mm -hmm. we all basically teach very similar things. It's how we approach it based on our own experience and background. And mm -hmm. I would say um, working class background adds even more value. <laughs> um, you grew, you've grown up with more challenges, different kinds of challenges. Um, and It's about first honoring the value that you are. Um, be seen, be heard, be valued is really tapping into what does it take um, to be visible? How do I build the self-confidence to put myself out there? Be heard is what message am I delivering and am I delivering that effectively? Mm -hmm. uh, many times people understand their value but have no idea how to communicate powerfully. Um, mm -hmm. And that's a skill and that's a gift. And be valued is when you understand your value and start putting it out there, you, you don't have to force it on anyone. Mm -hmm. People that are aligned with your messaging will find you if you are consistently in action, putting yourself out there, communicating your message with clarity, then you don't have to force it. Mm -hmm. So when... Let's say some people now say, I want to invest in myself. Maybe I have an idea which I want to put on the market. Um, of course, they often will claim, well, when I want to be seen, it's, it's always a question of budget, how much marketing I can afford. And when the budget is limited, my visibility will be limited. Would you agree with right. that? Do you think that's it? Okay, obviously you don't. So, so, but how, how shall I approach the market when I say, I, I invested in myself, I might have the skills, but how do I actually become visible on a very crowded marketplace with my idea? Uh, that's, that's really depending on, I guess, the market um, and what field you're in, right? Mm -hmm. um, but the thing that I know to be true that runs across all the fields is you lead with what's your unique selling point. What, why you amongst all these five hundred like what is the benefit of coming to you what do you offer it's not mm -hmm. leading with just the benefits of working like in this um particular arena not the benefit of just the product but who you are what are your values um people are more buying into people and company values and structures like that now because as you said the marketplace is crowded um and so we want to invest our money in companies that we can get behind. Uh, I think every single large corporation is investing in brand identity and core value reinvention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they're putting themselves out there differently. Um, interesting, if you look at the current marketplace, mm -hmm. um, everyone's going to get behind the blackout movement or not. Yeah. Um, that's where we're going to see um, company values. But for someone starting out with a lower budget, not that much clients, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to say it's about connecting. Look at your circle. Look at your immediate geographic location. Who is it that you're actually able to serve there? If you cannot get anyone to buy in within your geographic location then mm -hmm. the issue is not with marketing it's how you connect with your actual product mm -hmm. because i don't think you truly have a product that you can stand behind if you can't get people yeah people within your circle i'm going to say and not friends family but it's acquaintances it's people that you can connect with via social media before you do a huge marketing push if you can't sell or get mm. the buy-in of those people, then I think there's an issue. Yeah, absolutely. So when 
when people now start coaching, of course, and I when I prepared for this session, I looked at the questions people normally have towards coaching. One question which frequently arises is, when am I finished? So I, I want to have a goal which I set and then I somehow arrive to, to, to achieve that goal. How would you say when someone asks you that, that question, how would you answer, when is coaching finished? I freaking love that question. <laughs> Because um, when I started out coaching, um, I had that limited mentality of, I want to make sure that you get to that end goal and you're done. Mm. Um, everyone, uh, most, I won't say every, most clients come into a coaching, coaching relationship with a specific objective in mind. Along the journey of hitting that objective, <laughs> new goals arise, yes. new challenges and I would say that sometimes we hit the goal, oh gosh, within the first few sessions, or mm -hmm. the goal completely changes and it morphs. Mm -hmm. I, I think it really depends on the coach that you're working with. I can only really speak to my coaching practice. And the core of my coaching practice is, okay, you bring in a goal. Let's see if this goal is actually meaningful to you. Because most people don't hit the goals because they actually don't freaking care. They're mm -hmm. like, that's nice to have. A, I've set a financial goal of £10,000 a month because that's what society told me would mean that yeah. I've made it. I heard and they're that. like, <laughs> yeah, and they don't actually care about making £10,000 a month. What matters to them is that they pay the bills and go on holiday frequently mm -hmm. and have family time. So really, yeah. they recognize 6000 a month because they don't want to invest the time and energy it takes to go to ten. And they find greater joy. So when is coaching done? It's when you feel that you have no more goals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when, you, when you feel that you can step away and you no longer need mentoring. Yeah. As a life coach, we have clients that have been with us for six, seven years. Um, and it's, it's about always at the end of a contract going, okay, where are you now? Where do you want to go? Are you complete here? And each person is different. Each person is like, yeah, I'm complete. I'd like to step away and see what I can do by myself. And other people are like, no, I know the value in continuing. And so they push forward. So based on the individual and the coach, I, I would say. Yeah, excellent. So just to wrap this whole interview up, if, if someone's sitting with his or her headphones on now, listening to this saying, okay, I'd like to get started. What are your top three tips for people who think about getting started in, in the coaching area to, to start working with a coach? To start working with a coach is contact them. Have that, most coaches give that, uh, the free session 30 minutes, whether 30, 45, an hour to get to know you and so that you can get to know them, their mm -hmm. values and their approach. It's, that is the most useful thing. You're not there to hire someone to tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. You're buying into a uh, perspective um, and buying into knowledge, wisdom, and someone that's good at listening and someone that's um, good at tackling challenges. Mm -hmm. um, I would say do the research. And you always kind of know when someone's right for you, you listen to their messaging, you have a conversation and you have that feeling. We can't discount that gut feeling that you get um, yeah. when you have a conversation with someone. Uh, other than that is become clear, what is it that you want to achieve? Mm. Like, what is it that you want to actually work on? Um, some people want a coach to become clear on where they go with their life. You're not going to hire um an executive or a speaking coach to help you figure out the next step in your life because they're going to give you skills for performance and how to get your message out there you want mm. clarity on your message first of all that might be the same coach it might be a different type of coach so each person needs to become clear what they're looking to get from that relationship and thirdly and maybe most importantly, is sit down and reflect on how committed am I to my growth? Is the moment that you actually decide that, then you start looking at 
the coach, you start looking at your goals differently and you actually start getting in action before you even uh, engaging with a coach. Because if you start to connect with that level of commitment, then nothing stops you. Yeah, absolutely. That is excellent content. Of course, I'm going to put your contact data in the show notes so people can get in touch with you directly for any additional information. And now at the end of this interview, I can only say one thing to wrap this all up. Matt, thank you very much for your time. And thank you, Niels, for doing this.